All right, Jennifer, thank you. And joining me now for more reaction to this developing story, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Uh, Senator, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Glad to be with you, Sean. All right, I guess it's a simple question. Do you think this is a wise decision, and do you think that the president needs congressional approval? Absolutely, he needs congressional approval. The Constitution is very clear on this subject. In fact, James Madison explained in the Federalist Papers, he said, the executive branch is the branch most likely to go to war. Therefore, we vested the power to go to war in Congress. Without question, Congress should vote on this, and he is going against the Constitution, and it will be an unlawful act if he actually takes military action without having Congress vote on the issue. All right, the president himself said that in 2007, and even Joe Biden, he took it a step further. And I think these words are important. This was just before they took office. Joe Biden says he would impeach somebody who would do what the president may be about to do. Listen to what he said. I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee for 17 years, or its ranking member. I teach separation of powers and constitutional law. This is something I know. So I got together and brought a group of constitutional scholars together to write a piece that I'm going to deliver to the whole United States Senate pointing out the president has no constitutional authority to take this nation to war against a country of 70 million people unless we're attacked or unless there is proof that we are about to be attacked. And if he does, if he does, I would move to impeach him. The House obviously has to do that, but I would lead an effort to impeach him. The reason for my doing that, I don't say it lightly. I don't say it lightly. I say it because they should understand that what they were threatening, what they were saying, what was adding up to be, what looked like to the rest of the world what we were about to do, would be the most disastrous thing that could be done at this moment in our history okay. that I can think of. Uh, could this be any more clear, Senator? <laughs> well, here, here's the funny thing about this. Biden, you know, actually presides over the Senate. He's the president of the Senate. He would preside over his own impeachment. I suggest he come to the Senate floor and reiterate his position. If that's still his position, he would be for impeaching himself and impeaching his administration. What they need to do is they need to come before a joint session of Congress. They need to spell out, lay out their case. And if they want to take the nation to war, they need to convince a majority of Congress. But you know what? You know, you know the reason they won't? They won't risk a vote because they're worried that they could be defeated. It happened in the British Parliament. The American people are not excited about a new war. We're horrified by people gassing their own citizens. We'd like to know who did it, which side did it. But we're not excited to get involved in a new war right now. And so I will do everything I can to stop the president. We should not engage in a war, and we certainly shouldn't engage in it in an unconstitutional fashion. Well, you mentioned, that, you know, early on it seemed like the French and the British were quick to, to jump on the president's side. You, meant, you referred to the vote earlier in Parliament that the Cameron is a pretty big defeat. It, it seems like whatever momentum they had to go forward with this seems to be stopped. Do you think that's also emerging in, in Washington? Well, see, this is what Joe Biden was talking about. The separation of powers allows for checks and balances. It allows for a cooling off period. It allows for people not to emotionally go to war. You have to think about it. And when I think about war, I think about one of my sons or one of your sons going off to war. We do have to fight on occasion, but when we fight, we should fight to win. We should fight for an American cause. I can't see fighting to impose Sharia law in, in Syria. I also can't see sending my son to fight with Islamic rebels against Christians. I also can't see my son going to fight with Al on the same side as Al-Qaeda. There are so many ironies and unfortunate muddling nature to this that I can't see why we should get involved and there are potential repercussions. Oh. If he launches this little piddling attack with a few cruise missiles, it won't stop chemical weapons, but it may well incite a gas attack on Israelis. I think it's a big mistake. I think that that's certainly one concept. We could even start an, an all-out war in the Middle East if, if the Iranians get involved as they threaten to do so. There's a question about U.S. intelligence. The Washington Times today said they're still working through an assessment. We haven't ascertained completely that it was Assad that's responsible for the chemical attack. That's backed up by an article in the Telegraph and even our own Associated Press said it's not a slam dunk. Don't we have to be sure and certain that he's responsible before we make this uh, decision? Well, you know, some commentators have been asking an important question. Pat Buchanan wrote this in an essay, and he asked the Latin phrase, qui bono, 
whose benefit is this? So does it benefit Assad to have used chemical weapons? Absolutely not. That's incurred the wrath of the world, and he's known that it would. Whose benefit? It seems to be to the benefit of the rebels. So the rebels have every incentive to have used chemical weapons. I don't know who did, but I've been presented with no evidence yet, and I'd like to see the evidence before we go off half-cocked into a war. Yeah, would we... Um if, in fact, the president does this, Dennis Kucinich said that we're going to be using the U.S. military to help support and back al-Qaeda. It seems a likely successor would be radical Islamists with al-Qaeda ties. Do you agree with that assessment? Um, yes. I mean, they say that al-Qaeda comprises about a third of the forces, that they're the fiercest fighters, and if Assad is toppled, in all likelihood, there will be a successive civil war, and in all likelihood, al-Qaeda may take over. But the other question is, what if the other Islamic, the better, the moderate Islamic rebels take over? You'll still probably have Sharia law. You'll have Christians persecuted for blasphemy. There's a woman named Asia Bibi in Pakistan right now on death row who they say committed blasphemy, and all she says is, I drank out of the same cup as some of my Muslim workers. So that's not the kind of thing I see that I want to send our young boys and girls to live and die for to impose some sort of Islamic regime on Syria.